This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Dub them ease. And do not adjust your headphones. Do not adjust your computer monitors. This is the Onside Kick. This is not the Primetime Podcast. You're usually listening and you're like, wait a second, why am I not dubbing them ease this week? No, they did. I said it. Oh, did you? Well, I didn't pay attention. No, you didn't I because didn't. you went right, I thought, right past it. Well, so I, I, I threw in dub them ease I'm because so used to Mark Weber was supposed to be sitting here and I thought I would put in a little Mark Weber. I am so used to hey, hey, hey that it all just sounds the same to me. Ricky's also used to just not another. listening to when other people talk. Well, so. and I'm glad you did that because Sean does the same thing. So now it keeps the tradition of whoever sits there for the onside kick. Um, we just dub E's even if your name doesn't have any E's because your name doesn't have an E at all. Brandon and no. Swanson does not have a single E. Mine has one E. Sean, I think Sean's does have two E's. Dave has two E's. Johnny has no no E's. So um, only Sean and Mark and Dave can officially dub those E's, but we're dubbing them anyways. Onside Kick, this is where we talk about all the best news, all the best stories from the NFL each and every week. We got a jam-packed show in this one. We got a trade to talk about, Josh Gordon and the Browns. They've got a deal that they went through, the Browns and the Patriots. We're going to talk about that. A little bit of Steeler drama, too. I mean, two weeks ago to start the year, Mark and I talked about the Le'Veon Bell situation. Now we've got an Antonio Brown situation after you and I on What's Your Fantasy talked about if fantasy owners of of AB should be worried. I guess they should now. Um, We're going to get into that, and then we're going to talk about Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for your second favorite team. The Kansas City Chiefs, I don't know if the Bears and Chiefs, I don't know where they rank anymore, so I'm just going to (laughs) say that the Bears are number one and the Chiefs are number two. And then we're going to make our picks for this week in the NFL. Before we get into everything, though, a little bit of housekeeping. First off, check out patreon.com backslash Podcast. That's where you can help support the channel. That's where you can also become a guest on a podcast each and every month that you join us at the $10 tier. You support the channel. We give back and invite you on a show of your choosing each and every month. You can also get yourself an MVP t-shirt. That's in the description or at mostavailablepodcast.com where you can get your MVP each and every day. And then last but not least, please go on to iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Even if you're on YouTube, please go over there. Give us a five-star rating. Let us know why you like listening to the podcast. It really helps us out, and it lets other people know why they should check out the Onside Kick each and every week here on MVP. But, Brandon, let's start with some uh, Josh Gordon news. So, Josh Gordon, it was announced on Saturday night that the Browns were going to release him on Monday. Then Monday happened, and they're like, no, 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 we're going to trade him. We got interest from 10 teams. And then by the deadline, the 3 Eastern deadline, I think it was? No, it was 3 Central, 4 Eastern deadline to where you need to cut a player before that week starts. The Browns and the Patriots made a trade. And the trade was Josh Gordon will be joining New England A fifth-round pick will be coming into the Cleveland Browns' possession. And also, if Josh Gordon doesn't play 10 games for the Patriots, the Browns will then have to give the Patriots back a late-round pick. So I want to start this one. Of course, we're going to talk about what it means for both teams, what it means for Josh Gordon. I want to start with the Browns first. In terms of the Browns, was this a good trade, an okay trade, a bad trade in your mind. I'm going to go with it was an okay trade Mm -hmm. um, because the Browns got something back for a guy that, let's be honest, as much as the Browns, I think, truly do 100% support a guy like Mm -hmm. Josh Gordon, it was time. Remember how excited Hugh Jackson was on Hard Knocks? Oh, I got a text from, I got a text from Josh Gordon, yeah. Yeah, I got a text from him. When uh, John Dorsey was like, oh, you got a text from Ray Lewis? No, just Josh Gordon. Remember how excited he was for that. Just remember that. Put that in the memory banks. I, I think it's it's one of those things where the the guys loved Josh Gordon. Mm-hmm. They they did support him. I, I mean, clearly their actions of sticking with him side by side and allowing him to, to what, leave. Five and, years? I mean, yeah, what was it, five, six years? Mm-hmm. And he 
he has to take time this off season to to go and and he wanted to ch- you know check himself back in and make sure things were going okay and take they allowed him to take that time and Hugh Jackson wasn't going to let him start in week one. However, that got messed up. Mm-hmm. He did start in week one. He was <laughs> out on the on the field for week one, but this team stood by Josh Gordon and they believed that it was time after he was healthy all week long and then he shows up on Saturday and says, you know, I've got this injury. And they're going, what's up? Mm -hmm. You were healthy all week. And then to hear that it possibly was from a promotional shoot, that it's it's one of those things where if you're the Browns, you're saying, you know what? We know what your talent is. Mm -hmm. You're good. We like we like having you because we know what you can be and you know what you can be, but you've got to get there. And I think this was starting to become just too much of an issue for them. Mm -hmm. And it was time for them to be able to move on. So for the Browns, I think it's an okay move because you did get rid of a good player. You get something back in return, but I say it's okay because this wasn't a great deal. Mm -hmm. You didn't get a good pick from the Patriots. The Patriots are going to most likely be a good team. You're going to not have a very high pick in that fifth round. Mm-hmm. And then if he doesn't even play the 10 games, well, then there's another pick that the Patriots get from you. So it's an okay trade mm-hmm. in my mind. And I'm looking at the Adam Schefter report. There's two things in the language that I got to update. First off, the late round pick that I originally saw as late round pick is now a seventh rounder. So, I mean, you're looking at going, whatever, it's a seventh rounder. But Bill Belichick knows how to just <laughs> snipe guys in that four, six, seven round range. And also, it's not just play. It's if he's not active for 10 games. And I think the thing that helps the Browns is that the Patriots will be in the playoffs. So that's extra games on top of the 14 that we have left that Josh Gordon needs to be active for. But he doesn't need to play Snaps. He just needs to be active. If he's out on the depth chart, then that would not be good. He would not be active for that game. But for me, the first thing is you bring up the photo shoot, and the thing I want to go to is Adam Schefter did say on Wingo and Golick that although that all happened and he did tweak his hamstring doing that promotional thing, he wanted to make it clear from his sources that that was not the reason. The Browns ended up trading him. It could have played into it a little bit, let's be honest. Like, the Browns could come out and say, no, 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 that's not the reason. But let's be honest, it could have played in just a little bit. Adam Schefter was describing it as a culture change. And that's why for this move on the Browns side, I don't know how to really feel. I feel conflicted. Because on one side, I'm thinking horrible trade. And the reason why I'm thinking that is, in my mind, I have a value for Josh Gordon of what he can be of even what he showed week one when he had that catch for a touchdown of what he can bring to a team. And it is way more valuable than a fifth-round pick. But then there's the other side of me that's like, okay, no, this is an okay trade because the big thing Cleveland needs to do this year and the main reason why they brought in guys like Tyrod Taylor or Tyrod Taylor and it showed during hard knocks is that they're changing the culture. And the good thing for this trade with the Browns is that this shows, all right, although we will support you, like if you're a guy on this team, this sends the message of if you mess up for any reason, we are going to support you. But if you keep biting the hand that feeds you, eventually there has to be consequences. And it's one of those where it's kind of like you're in a relationship with a girl and You want to be there for her, but you know that she's never going to change. She's never going to change. She's never going to stop hurting herself, which in turn hurts you. And eventually you have to make the hard decision to say, well, I'm walking away. I'm dusting my hands off. I'm walking away from it. And that's what the Browns did. Did they get the exact value they would have wanted? No, but they just get them out of the building. They get to move on. They get to change their culture, which... I mean, they're not going to lose every single game this year, um, but they still have not won a game yet in 2016. Let's flip this around, though. What does this mean for the Patriots? Because now they get a prime wide receiver, and I've seen on Twitter numerous ones, and I was talking to one of our Twitter followers, Mike2K, 
And the first thing, I asked it as a joke, but then he quoted me in another tweet that someone had referenced the same thing, someone of like um, a reporter, I believe, from a different site. And my first joke was, oh, Randy Moss 2.0, right? Like that's what's going to happen. Tom Brady's going to make Josh Gordon the Randy Moss 2.0 that Randy Moss was with the Patriots in 07. What should fans expect from Josh Gordon in a New England Patriot uniform? You know, I don't want to. I don't really want to compare him to this guy mm-hmm. because I. I don't. I think he'll be a lot better because I think he can do more. Mm-hmm. But the Patriots, when they got rid of Brandon Cooks, they've been lacking that downfield presence. Yep. And that's what got Josh Gordon can bring. But mm-hmm. Josh Gordon can bring a whole lot more than that. I think he's got more strength, more versatility than what Brandon Cooks had. Brandon Cooks was run down the field, mm-hmm. run straight. Brandon, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Tom will Tom will find you on one mm-hmm. of these one of these plays. Where Josh Gordon, I think, can do a whole lot more over the middle as well. Uh, this is a guy that if you want to compare him to Randy Moss, Josh Gordon right now is about 6'3, 225. Randy Moss was 6'4, 210, mm-hmm. something like that. That is a Tom Brady tough, usually doesn't have tall wide receivers. That is receivers. a tough, tough comparison to be able to make um, to everything that Randy Moss has done. We saw it. One season for for Josh Gordon. Mm-hmm. We saw that one season for Josh Gordon. That was in 2013. In that season, Josh Gordon had 87 catches for over 1,600 yards and nine TDs. Mm-hmm. That was incredible. That was an incredible season. And you know who he was doing that with at quarterback? Brandon Whedon, Brian Hoyer, and Jason Campbell. Can you believe that? I can't. Those three guys, and that's, those numbers are what Josh Gordon was able to put up. You know where Brian Hoyer learned how to be a quarterback from? It's with Tom Brady. New England. England. (laughs) But but, but seriously, you look at those three quarterbacks Mm -hmm. and what he was able to do with them, you give him Tom Brady and and, and how good Josh Gordon already is as a player. We know he's a good player. We know that he can make plays we know that he can stretch the field and do that and after this past week and i think we clearly saw that that's what new england is lacking Mm -hmm. that's what that's what can make this new england team i think i don't want to say get over the hump because it's two games and they're one and one big woo in september Mm -hmm. you know the patriots are if they're playing like this after september maybe that's when you start to get a little concerned but this is going to help them play better the rest of the season I think that they fully expect to have Josh Gordon in there moving forward. This is a guy who's going to help their team. Tom Brady is going to be really happy to have Tom. Go- uh, excuse me. Tom Brady's going to have. Re- he's going to be really happy to be in there himself, but he's going to also be really happy to have Josh Gordon there. Mm-hmm. It just adds another layer. And then once you get Edelman back, you have Edelman. You have Philip Dorsett, who's been serviceable. You have Chris Hogan. You have Gronk, and then you add in Josh Gordon. This is an offense that is, and then you have Sony Michelle as as well, who looked pretty pretty good out of the backfield on a couple of runs on Sunday. This is a team that's going to definitely be better with Gordon in the lineup. Well, and the thing that I'm looking at, and you kind of mentioned a few, you mentioned two of them in Dorsett and then Brandon Cooks. And the thing with Patriot fans, what can you expect? First off, should you expect to see the Josh Gordon from 2013 I'm going to lean towards no, but you could see flashes of that. And the reason why I say that is the Patriots have been known throughout Bill Belichick's entire career in New England of taking flyers on guys who many of us feel are just done. They are done. They're not going to do anything. Their career is over. Make the old the old yellow reference that I usually love to reference on these podcasts. But I've got a few names, and you mentioned Philip Dorsett. Um, he's one. He was with the Patriots last year is when they got him, and he was kind of just all right. Already through two games this year, he's got just as many catches as he did last year. He's got about four less targets than he did last year. 110 yards and a touchdown. Philip Dorsett to me this year looks way better than he ever did in a Colt uniform. Why we were excited about him coming out of Miami in 2015. 
Then you look at Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is one of those was, was he like that much better in New England than with the Rams? No. It still had a thousand yard receiving season, had about seven to eight touchdowns. He was just Brandon Cooks last year. And then they go ahead and move him to the Rams. But there's other guys like Martellus Bennett, who after Marty B, like Marty B wasn't bad with the Bears, but think about 2015. He had a subpar season, under 500 yards, only three touchdowns. Many people were like, Marty B might be done. This might be the it, it for Marty B. Goes to the Patriots, has a 700-yard season, seven touchdowns, and even came back to the Patriots in 2017 um, after signing with the Packers. But I believe that 2016 season, too, he also got his Super Bowl for being on the Patriots. Danny Amendola, was he terrible in... Um, St. Louis, no, but goes to the Patriots and you immediately see, yeah, he was kind of injury prone, played about like never played a full season more than once, I believe in New England, but he was a guy that became kind of reliable with yards. Wasn't a huge touchdown guy. Brandon LaFell was another one. He was in Carolina, 627 yards, five touchdowns in 2013, goes over to New England in about 40 last, or no, I'm looking at it wrong. He had about 30 more targets with New England, and he went up to 953 receiving in 2014 with Tom Brady. Wes Welker's another one. Miami gets rid of him. We don't need him. He goes to New England. Boom. His career is reborn. Brandon Lloyd is another one where he was a 683 yard receiver in St. Louis. Goes to New England the next year. He's almost a 1,000-yard receiver. Randy Moss is the miracle story. With the Vikings, trades him to... Couldn't remember if we traded him or he was free agency, but he goes to the Raiders for two years, does diddly-poo with the Raiders, then goes to New England and has probably the best three seasons that he's had (laughs) since being a Minnesota Viking. So this is what the Patriots do. They take flyers on guys, and for me... I feel like this this move for the Patriots, will it help them? Yes, of course. But if it doesn't work out, if it doesn't work out and he's not active for 10 games and he doesn't contribute, they're still going to make the playoffs. They get a seventh rounder from the Browns. It's a win for the Patriots. Like They are perfectly fine moving back from 5-7 to seven in the 2019 draft. More importantly for me, I think this is going to be a great move for Josh Gordon because he gets to go from the dysfunctional family in Cleveland to the structured family in New England. And I know we talk about like, oh, Dorsey and Cleveland, they wanted to really like, they cared about Josh Gordon. New England is going to be that family that, they're just they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to hold you more accountable than Cleveland will. The guys I feel like he'll bond a lot better with the guys in the Patriot locker room. Not saying that the guys in the Brown locker room are Can, garbage. I, I they're have not. To, I have to ask a question though mm-hmm. because you're saying that basically that Cleveland was saying that they did support Josh Gordon. You're saying they didn't support Josh Gordon. The Patriots will no because the Patriot way is better than Cleveland. Is I'm, that what you're saying? I'm not saying that they didn't care about Josh Gordon, but it's to me it kind of seemed like that. Hey, we're here for you, but we're gonna let you go and do your own thing. Whereas Bill Belichick and the Patriot system is a lot more structured. It's a lot more in place. And Josh Gordon, I feel like, in Cleveland, never felt like, hey, I got to get my act together because if I don't, I'll be gone. Do it was th- always like, a, oh, well, when you're ready, you'll come back. We're in New England. If you're not cutting it, if you're not going to do your job, that's their big thing. Do your job. Bill Belichick will cut you and drop you quicker than he got to you or got you on this team. Do you, so, do you think that it'll be easier for mm-hmm. Josh Gordon to go to a, a a team that wins? And I'm not saying help. that I'm not saying that the Browns weren't going to see some victories this mm-hmm. year because we've already seen two games that they should have won. Everything helps but, when you win. But do you think that it it, it might be better for him personally? 
being in New England and mm-hmm. being around a winning culture. Yeah, it might give them motivation. Because with Cleveland, you know, maybe, again, I I, I know that, you know, people who have dealt with addiction, most of us mm-hmm. do. Does it matter, though? You know, do, does that matter? Is that something that could help him? Is it something that when he was in Cleveland, it was just kind of like, hey, we suck anyways, so... Might as well do something to make me feel better. I mean, it or, could have or been is that. it is it just you know the addictions here, mm-hmm. the winning and the losing is here that they're two separate things, and I, now they might be to a degree or they might not be. It helps, and I'm not going to say it totally takes away because the addiction is that's its own problem or that's the source of everything. But for the motivation side, it's a lot easier to motivate yourself. To try to say, hey, I need to help myself when your team's actually doing good. When you actually are like, holy crap, I can play in the playoffs. I might be able to win myself a Super Bowl with this team. Because now he's got the GOAT throwing to him. He's got the best quarterback in the league. The best quarterback that we've ever seen play the game in our lifetime throwing him the football. And, I mean, not to knock on Cleveland, but with how bad that they've been... I don't know Josh Gordon personally, but I wouldn't be surprised or I wouldn't be shocked, I should say, if it was like a like you said, well, you know, we suck. And then you get that like that complacent attitude. And that's why I feel this deal is going to be it's that breakup between the Browns and Josh Gordon where it's like that. You see your buddy and that girl break up and you go, you know what? This is going to be better for a lot for both of you. You guys might be sad right now. But this is going to end up better for you because for the Browns, they don't need to feel like, hey, we have to keep Josh around because if we get rid of him, then it shows like we don't care about his problem. They can get rid of him. They can change their culture and they can move on being the Browns. And Josh Gordon moves into a system where not only are they winning, it's a regimented locker room that all you hear from players is how great the Patriot locker room is. Like, you hear the bad things from the media, all Patriot players, great things about that locker room. Those guys are going to be with them. They're going to help motivate them. He'll make relationships with those guys. And then most importantly, Bill Belichick is, and this is not a knock at Hugh Jackson or any Browns coach. Well, it's hard to do this when you have a revolving door at coach also. But Bill Belichick is going to hold Josh Gordon more accountable than any Browns coach has ever held Josh Gordon. And that's going to be, in the end, good for Josh Gordon. I just think that this 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 deal is good. I think it's really good for New England. Mm-hmm. I think it's really going to help them, especially once it gets after week four. Edelman's back. Things are back to normal, mm-hmm. I guess you could could say and our fantasy team gets a boost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely do. I I just don't believe that Gordon that the Patriots go out and they get him. Again, they're not giving up a ton. They're not. No. But they're kind of taking a bit of a flyer. It's like in our fantasy team, mm-hmm. with our fantasy team, you go out onto the waiver wire and you take a little bit of a flyer on a guy who yeah. you know can be good. They just need to produce mm-hmm. and be given the right situation. Well, they're trying to give him the right situation, and they know that he can produce. Mm -hmm. He's got the talent. He's in great shape. The guy is – he's ready. Mm -hmm. I I mean, you can tell. It just – he's really trying to get his life turned around. He is ready. He wants to make this happen. And who better than to help make it happen than Bill Belichick and Tom Brady? The thing that I would love to know, and I just wanted to, I'm trying to look at articles to see if, uh, see if anyone, okay, there is an article that has two of them. Um, There's a 247 or 24-7 sports article um, that before he was traded that the Cowboys and 49ers had minimal interest, and the Cowboys were a team that I was hoping would have interest in Josh Gordon because I want to say this. Thank God Josh Gordon went to the Patriots and not the Cowboys because just from those two, like think of that comparison in your mind of take the Browns out of it, put in any team that he could have gone to. And the Cowboys are that team that 
They need a wide receiver. They got rid of Des Bryant. They still need a wide receiver for Dak to throw to because Cole Beasley is their number one wide receiver. He's not even number one on the depth chart. What are you paying Alan Hearns for? But think about how dysfunctional that team is. Jason Garrett is nothing compared to Bill Belichick with what he's done establishing the culture. You got Jerry up in the box basically being like a loose cannon half the time and treats the team more like a fantasy team than he does like an actual NFL team. This will be, like I've said, this will be the best situation for Josh Gordon. And if he's able to come in, focus, get ready to work, then it'll work out for the Patriots. If he doesn't, then the Patriots get a seventh-round pick. They don't have to lose it. It's not like they're giving up a third or second or a fourth-round pick. They're giving up a fifth-round pick, which is chip change to the Patriots. And I know someone's going to make the joke, yeah, but Ricky, think about who they took in the sixth round with uh, this quarterback out of Michigan and Tom Brady. They could be giving up the next Tom Brady with that pick. Yeah, but I'm not confident the Browns are going to find that Tom Brady with that pick. So that would be my retort to that. I'll ask you this. Any final thoughts with the Josh Gordon deal in any way? Browns, Patriots, Josh Gordon. Just that Josh Gordon is a guy who really can bring a a new element to this Patriot team. One that they lost when they got rid of Brandon Cooks, but also one that they could add a little bit more to. Like I mentioned at the top of the segment is that Gordon is more than just a deep threat. He's a guy who can work over the middle. He's really he has great hands. We saw that by his touchdown catch against Pittsburgh in week one. He had one catch for 17 yards and yeah. a touchdown, and that was outstanding. Mm-hmm. And it went for a huge touchdown in the game. He's a playmaker. And to have a playmaker alongside Rob Gronkowski for Tom mm-hmm. Brady to be able to throw to, that's going to be a great thing for Tom Brady. And ultimately, it's going to be a great thing for the Patriots because so far this season, while, yes, New England won in week one, Mm -hmm. it was still a close game against Houston. If they have Josh Gordon in that game, it probably isn't. And if they have Josh Gordon in the game against the Jaguars, it's a closer game than what it was Mm -hmm. 31-20. to So that's what Josh Gordon will be able to do. I'm not saying that he's going to repeat his 2013 numbers because a guy, I mean, we're in now 2018. That's five years ago. So. Mm To get back to that level of production, however, it's five years of in and out of lineups, in mm-hmm. and out of rehab and stuff like that, and and in and out of the NFL because of having to go to rehab because of drug abuse and everything like that and substance abuse within the NFL. So he can get there. Mm-hmm. He can get there. He can certainly be a 1,000 to 1,200-yard receiver and a guy who will certainly help propel the Patriots into the playoffs for a deep run. I, I really truly think that, especially when you talk Julian Edelman getting, getting back into it. I've got two final thoughts, both of them with the Browns. One's a serious one, one's kind of a jokingly, but huh, kind of makes you wonder. I'll go with the serious one first. This deal, this trade, I hope that Antonio Callaway is watching. I was just going to say. Because he's one, although it's not drug addiction with Antonio Callaway, he's one that came into the NFL draft with questions, personal off-the-field issues, and he fell because of it. The Browns took a flyer on him. He did, I can't remember from Hard Knocks, he did something over the offseason that they weren't happy about. Was it like speeding? He was like reckless driving or something? That, for some reason, I want to say that he had a gun in his car. Um, But basically, he, the Browns were like, hey, that's not going to fly. And his punishment was, and I remember this because they said it on Hard Knocks, he played every snap of that first preseason game. Every single snap, he was out there. It was like, I don't care that you're tired. You're out there. You're going to play every single snap. I hope he's watching. I hope he's going to learn from this because this is showing a guy like Antonio Callaway that, hey, we're going to be here for you. We're going to help you through your stuff. It's not like one thing and you're gone. But, you know, you're just anyone's disposable. But also anybody that's going to hurt this culture is disposable. That Antonio Callaway is the next man up. I mean, we yeah. saw what he did this past weekend in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. He was he was kind of the guy in the deep threat, and that's what he is. That's what mm-hmm. he was at Florida. Antonio Callaway is that next guy with Josh Gordon being gone. It's Jarvis Landry. It's Antonio Callaway. Mm-hmm. So not only is he 
going to be looking at it from that perspective, but he's also going to be looking at it as, hey, I'm going to be seeing the limelight. And the thing, the second thing that I was going to say is kind of like a joke, but it kind of makes you wonder. Think about the the storyline that we've had for the Browns wide receiver core this year. It all starts in, what, the first or second episode of Hard Knocks. Corey Coleman says, well, if you ain't going to use me, F and trade me. They trade him away. Then you have in another Hard Knocks episode where the not just the Jarvis Landry speech where I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's a great speech. Mark is one that was like, come on, dude, he was he was rambling a bit. And I think someone else on the Browns team kind of called them out for it. Some of the one of the new additions um, that they brought in. But then you've got Jarvis Landry starting a fight on the practice field. Um, during Browns training camp, you can like or hate that. And then now the latest in the Browns wide receiver core story of they trade their second wide receiver this year. And I'm not saying that Corey Coleman and Josh Gordon should have not have been traded. I get that the Browns are trying to change their culture, and that's what starts this year. Um, but it's just funny to see, all right, Josh Gordon is now the second wide receiver traded, and the guy you brought in to be your number one is has started a fight in the offseason. That's not a huge thing, but I think it's something to Jarvis look at. Jarvis Landry's a fighter. Goes back to his time in uh, Miami. Mm-hmm. He's a fighter. I, and like Mark said, completely, I understand what he's saying with the whole Blossom thing, but it's like, after a while, it just gets annoying when you just hear him go, you gotta bless him, man. You gotta bless him. All you do is bless him. <laughs> it's like, it's like when people say bless up. It's like, I get what you're saying, but after a while, it just DJ gets a little Callen, annoying. Bless up. Yeah, but this is where you guys come in. Let us know. Another one, Brandon? Does he also, another one, a major key alert? Is that what we're doing? Are we doing a another major key one. alert? Um, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section. What do you think about this trade? Josh Gordon, Browns, Patriots. There's a million sides you can hit it from. Let us know what you guys think down below in that comment section. 